warning, this podcast contains spoilers. And welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for Arrow Season 4, Episode 3, Restoration. I'm your host, Cleo, and welcome to the One Woman Podcast. Uh, Sorry about the timing of these episodes. They are going to come out pretty concurrently for, you know, until Dom joins, which Dom is joining. He's catching up. He will be caught up um, probably by next week. So, well, he catches up, I catch up. And, uh, let's talk about this episode. I, we have to start with Sarah. We have to start with Donda Parbat because I don't fucking believe that, that, that this is actually, I don't believe that this is how it's going down. I don't believe that this is how we're getting White Canary. Um, I know I probably said it last podcast and I know I definitely said it when, I was first theorizing how Sarah could come back, um, that I thought it was going to be a, hey, surprise, it's already been done, and she's been alive, hidden somewhere for a while, um, but, God, that bitch has been dead a long time, (laughs) longer than should be allowed to be brought back by the pit, and I like that how it was sort of like, when they lower her in, it's like, I don't think it worked. And you saw, like, the wave of relief that washes over Nissa. She's like, oh, thank God it didn't work. But it worked. I don't know how, like, what the... I feel like it shouldn't have worked. Right? I feel like it shouldn't have worked. Um, but Malcolm talked about it. Said how it was only done in ages past how Thea was an exception because the previous Roz wanted uh, Ollie to come in to be Roz. So he used it as leverage. Um, and I wonder if that's exactly what... Well, I don't have to wonder. Malcolm never does anything out of the kindness of his own heart because he doesn't actually have a heart. So, obviously, this is a ploy by Malcolm. To get Sarah on his side, to get Thea on his side. To what end? I don't... I'm not exactly sure. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like I was that way last season, too, with with Malcolm, where I was just like, I know what you're doing, I just have no fucking clue why. And even last season, like, when it came to light why he did it, it didn't, what he said and his actions didn't match up. (sighs) I have a feeling it's going to be something like that this season as well. Um, But he did say that it was done in ages past, which makes me wonder if that will come back. To uh, whether that will come to light or not, um, because I have a sneaking suspicion that if they were ever to bring Talia Al Ghul into this show, that she would probably be a daughter of a previous Roz, not Nissa's father, but someone else, uh, another Roz. And that she um, could possibly uh, be fighting for the throne as well. If they ever decide to bring Talia in, it's it's a it it may never happen. But I my head canon is that she's out in the world somewhere, uh, living her life similar to Damien Dark, where she has her own little bit of the Lazarus Pit to keep herself alive. That's my theory. Just, you know, putting it out there. Excuse me. Uh, 
So Malcolm, when we first see Malcolm, him and Nyssa are fighting, sparring, and sparring, because Nyssa is actually, while it doesn't seem like she's putting all of her fervor into that, that, that match, uh, it definitely did seem like she was looking for, looking for hesitation, looking for a, an opening. Um, she definitely wants to kill him. She wants him dead, and she knows that he's very, very good. Um... And she's wait. She's biding her time. She's waiting for because she can wait. She's patient. So, I just really, I really like their dynamic in that where it's like, I'm trying to kill you. I know. <laughs> it is super funny. Uh, but Malcolm's you. It seemed like Malcolm. The like the the glimpse we got of Malcolm using the pit seems like he's misusing it. You know. Because he gets a little tiny cut, little baby cut on his neck, and he uses the waters to heal it. It's like, are you sure that that's worth it? I'm pretty sure that would have healed in like a day. You know? It seemed like he was using it too liberally. Um, not that it matters anymore, really, because the pit's gone, but uh, it just, I, may, I found it very, very, like, very Malcolm thing to do, just to, to use the pit for, like, the tiniest of cuts. Um, and that alone should have been, like, you don't deserve it, <laughs> sort of a thing. Um, yeah, I mean, Laurel comes, she's like, I have to do this. It's like, do you, Laurel? Do you really have to do this? I love you, bitch, but, I mean, sometimes you don't got the best ideas in the world. Nissa tries so hard to talk her out of it, and uh, even when it comes down to the last bit, she's like, don't, don't fucking do it! Don't do it! I'm surprised, actually, that Nissa did not draw her sword against the, um, against the assassins who were kind of holding her back. Um, I'm sorry, I just looked at, uh, Oh no, I, I probably ruined everything. I just glanced at the wiki and one of the writers for this episode's name is Speedweed. His name is Speedweed. That's literally his name. Mwah, brilliant. Um, but anyway. <sighs> yeah, we have, we, we've got, we've got Sarah back? She's kind of just a growling dog right now, chained like, l really, really chained up. Super chained up. She is just growling. And, like, you see when she jumps out of the pit, because she does the same Matrix, you know, knee-up kind of crane kick, jump out of the pit, just like Thea did. And Thea's looking, and she's like, and she's just got that face when she sees Sarah jump out that's like, oh, shit, that looks familiar. You know, she's just sort of like, oh god, this is very familiar. Um, so she's de she's not happy. She knows she knows that it's not going to be a good thing for uh, for Sarah, especially since it's like times twenty for for Sarah. Uh, so Malcolm explains that thea has got a kill to sate the bloodlust, um, and she's like, yeah, fuck yourself. So of course he lies. Of course he lies about some fucking sage in the mountains. Some mountain man. And uh, sends some dudes just, you know, cannon fodder for her. Speaking of which, how do they find that many recruits? <laughs> for all the fucking League of Assassin Assassins that die all the fucking time. You know. Where they find the replacement? Excuse me, um, but he said that that'll probably sate it for a couple weeks. But it's like, what is she gonna do? How is she gonna deal with this in the future? She doesn't want to kill. Ollie doesn't want her to kill. None of Team Arrow wants her to kill. But she's going to feel the need to. And I think, however, Thea deals with it is gonna be a window for us to see how Sarah's gonna deal with it. Especially because we know of her upcoming role in The Legends of Tomorrow. Whether it is this Sarah or a different Sarah, 
that remains to be seen. I as I have been assuming that it's this Sarah, this Sarah that's been brought brought back. But it could be an Earth 2 Sarah. It could be a alternate Sarah. I don't know. I don't know, but I just last season when I was just like, oh no, they can't just dig her a year old body up and that that will never work. Like I, so, I sweep that under the rug so quick and went on with my other theories. For that to be what actually happened is unbelievable. Because I, I literally don't fucking believe that they did that. <laughs> it's really stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it just feels really stupid. That's all I have to say on that because I'll just be repeating myself over and over again if I stay there. I just Nissa. Oh yeah, did I did I say Nissa poisons the well? Poisons the pit? And Malcolm looked real upset. So upset. Mwah. Suck it, Malcolm. Fucking dick bag. That's a thing that happened in my back. Holy shit. Um, I still can't fucking believe that this, this is a plot line. Moving on. To original Team Arrow. The Arrow OGs, as Felicity likes to say. Um, we're not working so well together. I mean, they're trying, I guess. Um, but they end up getting the cyanide, the tooth, uh, cause, cause the dude tries to chomp it and Diggle just like rips the tooth out and the dude runs away. It's like, what? That was a, that was a pretty funny part. Um, but they got the tooth and, uh, what I didn't remember from my first, cause I watched this episode twice. Uh, what I didn't remember from the first watch through is, uh, that... Uh, Felicity says that the ghost only has half the gene markers that it should have. And it's not mentioned again in the episode, which is probably why I forgot about it, because there were a lot of really good parts of this episode. Um, all, all the Nanda Parbat stuff included, because as much as I think that it's a stupid plotline, I think they did it well. You know what I mean? Um... But for them to only have half the genetic markers they should? What the fuck is going on? I'm trying to think about it. And, and all I can think of is it's either magic or it's, you know, blood, brother blood hive weird shit going on. You know what I mean? So I did look it up. Brother blood and uh, Damien Dark are not the same person. But I have a feeling that they could be in this universe the same character. Especially since we saw him do that weird blood ritual in his little cabinet thing. Um, so if he's not Brother Blood, then he's got some sort of blood magic. Um, especially with his involvement with Hive. I think he's Brother Blood. Um, I could be proved wrong, though. I have been proven wrong, though, in this show before. So we're just going to have to find out. But it's just... I was thinking about it for so long. I'm like, why the hell do they only have half the gene markers? It doesn't make a lick of sense. Not that I, I mean, I'm in Ollie's boat. I mean, I passed biology. I didn't do very well, nor did I retain much information. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how a being can function without half of its bits, right? Right? He would just start to fall apart without half of his genes. At least I think that's how that works. I don't know. Anybody biology nerd, let me know. Draw me, draw me some facts. Some cold hard facts. Um, science the shit out of this for me. I saw a shirt that says I'm going to have to science the shit out of this and I want that shirt. I haven't even seen The Martian yet and I want that shirt. <laughs> It's just like my favorite line. I'm oh, gonna have to science the shit out of this. Um, so I have no idea what's going on. 
Uh, Diggle and Ollie, it seems, are ended up tracking the same bitch, uh, the head of Hive, who is Mina Fayad, who is also dead. <laughs> um, but Diggle reveals that he's been keeping notes in a book about everything that he's got on his brother's murder, his brother's death, how it's not an accident, um, how he was the target, everything that uh, Deadshot told him, and um, Mina Fayad is the first actual real lead that he's had uh, since Deadshot told him about Hive. Um, and finally he tells Ollie, and Ollie's like, oh, so that's why Hive meant something to you. Oh, I should point out that uh, the reason that Diggle told him that was because Felicity said, sit down, shut up, you tiny children, and kiss and make up while I go do some science. <laughs> Which is literally what happened. She left to do some science and told them to not leave the room until they made up. And uh, they kind of didn't make up before they left the room, but by the end of the episode, they did. Ollie took a bullet for Diggle, and Diggle's like, yeah, okay, fine, we're cool. <laughs> we're cool now. <laughs> uh, the first time I didn't feel this way, but now after seeing it a second time, it was kind of like, oh, Diggle, you really just were like that. It's like, oh, he took a bullet for me. I guess he can be trusted. Again. I don't know, it just seemed a little fast, is all. Like, zero to 60. Anyway. Um, I was talking about Mina Fayad and Hive and Diggle had a book and, um, Double Down. Double Down was really cool. I, they, they did such a good job with the CG of him taking the cards off of his skin, off of his tattoos and just flinging them. That was like an excellent CG job. Um, oh, and like, they were holding the cards and I was just the whole time. You're, you're holding a dude's skin. Stop it. Ooh. Um. <laughs> but in this episode, we really see some more of Damien Dark's powers and the fact that it's probably, definitely, totally magic because he does refer to it as parlor tricks. And to me, that, that really sounds like it's super magic stuff going on. Um. So I just can't wait to really see how he's doing all this stuff and the secrets behind his magic and all that stuff and how he's keeping the, the Lazarus pit water and like what container it's in. I just want to see it. <laughs> I have a thing for like jars and containers and I just want it to be like this crazy, awesome, intricate, like cork stopped jar. I don't know why. This is what I want. Um, yeah, so he just, he cards, Damien cards uh, uh, Mina in the neck. She's totally dead, which means that Damien's probably going to take control of Hive because all we've seen from Hive is Mina and Deadshot. Uh, but Deadshot was employed by Hive, so, you know, it's not, he wasn't running anything. Uh, we don't know who else is running Hive, and if it's just Mina, Damien's going to swoop that shit up, incorporate it into his weird cult of ghosts. I'll probably do more blood rituals. I don't know, just Damien's such a good mystery, you know? Like, we kind of got a lot of Raws up front. But, but like, Damien is just, like, we've seen him for five episodes. No, not five. Three episodes. And, like, no next to nothing about him. And it's insane. I hope they keep the mystery going a bit. What do we got? Oh. My fucking fate. This is, hands down, the best part of this episode was uh, uh, Curtis and Felicity. Because Felicity rolls up to Curtis like, yo, what up? Help me with a thing. I'm totally lying and being really obvious about it, but you're going to help me because we're cool, right? <laughs> I 
Felicity has become season one Ollie. Because she's doing exactly what Ollie did to her. And, like, lying horribly, like, it's not convincing at all, and Curtis knows that stuff is up. And, I mean, he immediately learns, like, in this episode, he learns that she's working for the Arrow and Green Arrow. I'm sorry, Green Arrow. He's been rebranded. Um, he finds out she's working for Green Arrow. Uh, so the jig is up really quickly. Uh, we don't get the whole long, drawn-out thing with Felicity, that we, like, like we got with Felicity in Season 1. Um, but it was just really cool to see the dynamic kind of flipped where she's the one lying horribly and <laughs> asking for this help. Um, so it's just, it's just super funny. Seriously, my favorite part. And she shot at the dude with her eyes closed. She closed her eyes and shot a machine gun. It's like, what are you, ah, uh, Felicity, open your eyes. It's not like she was aiming with her eyes open and then once she pulled the trigger, her eyes closed. She closed her eyes and then started to spray. It was just like, stop, Felicity, you're the worst. And then uh, she tells Ollie, and, and uh, Ollie's surprised. She's like, yeah, I defended myself. Why do you sound so surprised? And in my head, I'm like, I don't know, Felicity, maybe because if he saw you shooting at a guy with your eyes closed, he probably would have smacked you in the back of the head. <laughs> oh, man. But Curtis is oh, so cool, and I like how in the end he's just sort of like, you know what? It's pretty dope. I don't actually mind. <laughs> it's pretty dope that we're working for the Arrow. Yes, you're part of Team Arrow. I love it. Like he, he had the prototype for his Mr. Terrific stuff, all his inventions and things, and I can't wait to see Mr. Terrific. Excuse me. Meanwhile, in the past, flashback Ollie is trying to save people while embedded in the drug lord's weird army and the thing that they're growing is god what do they call it sting or something but it's heroin and coca beans or something and it's like so it's like chocolate heroin i don't understand like if i've got that wrong please correct me because chocolate heroin does not sound as dangerous as they're making it sound you know I seriously was just like, what? <laughs> when he said that. Also, Ollie's being like super obvious. He's like, we need to save these people. Don't, don't kill these people. It's like, Ollie, you're supposed to be. Because he, like, he, he's like, wait, 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 don't kill him. It's like, Ollie, you're supposed to be undercover. You're supposed to be better at this. <sighs> he's not. He's not better. Um, What else? Oh, he saves the lady. Uh, it's probably just gonna be another lady he bones on the island. I don't know, nor do I care. <laughs> um, it's just such a weird bit of stuff, because lately, usually, um, especially season three, the flashbacks related directly to what was going on in the episode. These flashbacks seem to have nothing to do with it. They're so disconnected. It's like, what is the point of these flashbacks? I don't understand. I hope they become more cohesive in this, this season because I cannot see where it's going, nor can I see any of the connections. Um, so next week's episode is Beyond Redemption. Fuck, I should have clicked on this before because it's going to load. It's going to take a while because the wiki is coded poorly. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not the people running the wiki's fault. It's, they do a good job um, of getting, like, synopsises and stuff out. So shout out to the wiki, um, the Flash Arrowverse, the Arrow, I think it's actually just called the Arrowverse wiki. Um, also, uh, if anyone knows anyone that runs that wiki, tell them they need to add Supergirl stat. Because it is not, they have Constantine on that motherfucker and they don't have Supergirl. I understand Constantine's going to be in an episode of Arrow. I get it totally, completely. It belongs there. But I think Supergirl needs to be there too if Constantine's going to be there. Um. So beyond redemption, Laurel must deal with the repercussions of taking Sarah to Nanda Parbat. Meanwhile, Oliver asks Captain Lance for a favor, and while he's not surprised at the response, he is surprised at what he finds out next. I bet he's going to find out that he's working with Damien. 
Uh oh, Spregadios. Um, so that's that's it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. You can find me at Cleomoto on the socials and on Twitch at the Cleomoto, and you can find all of us on ASO TV podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google Plus, and right here on YouTube. Follow us for some more podcasts from some of your favorite TV shows, like Supergirl and The Flash. Until next week. Seriously though, that bitch was like Mondo dead. I have no idea how that shit worked.